Hello everyone, welcome to Current Affairs for Beginners. Let's start our today's session. Before starting our session, we'll see the answers for the questions from our yesterday's video. The first question is, the National Health Protection Mission or Aishman Bharat Yojana launched by the government is the first major step in improving public health care services in India. Which of the following statements is or are correct regarding this scheme? This scheme will provide guaranteed access to treatment that is free at the point of delivery for BPL families only. According to this scheme, the data will be taken as per the socio-economic and caste census data. But it is eligible not only for BPL families but for others also. So this statement is wrong. This scheme guarantees healthcare access using private or public facilities. This is correct. So as one is wrong and two is only correct, the answer here is two only. It is B. The next question is which of the following statements given below is or are correct about Kajuraho temples? It is a group of Hindu and Buddhist temples in Madhya Pradesh built by Solanki dynasty between 950 and 1050 AD. Actually, Kajuraho temples were a group of Hindu and Jain temples, not Buddhist, in Madhya Pradesh built by Chandela dynasty, not Solanki dynasty. And this year is correct. The state temples are famous for their Dravidian style of architecture. These temples are not famous for their Dravidian style of architecture, but it is Nagara style of architecture. As both the statements were wrong, select the correct incorrect statement using the code below. So as both the statements were wrong, so the answer here is both 1 and 2. It is C. These are the topics that we are going to cover in a today's session. We'll see about the non-performing assets. We'll see what is this insolvency and bankruptcy code. We'll see what is this national company law tribunal. And we'll see about CRISPR-Cas9 tool. And we'll see this concept on consequential seniority and referendum. We'll see an international organization called OPEC. And we'll see about this securities appellate tribunal and unemployment rate in India and human capital score of India. Now we'll start the today's session. Our first article is NPS with PSU banks declining. This comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of economy. From this article now we'll see what are this NPS. Non-performing assets is a loan for which the principal amount or the interest is not paid by the customer even for a period of 90 days then that loan will be considered as a non-performing asset these non-performing assets were classified by the banks into three types one is standard non-performing asset doubtful non-performing asset and loss assets standard assets are the assets that remain as a non-performing asset for a period of less than or equal to 12 months whereas the doubtful asset will be classified as doubtful if it is remained in this substandard category for a period of 12 months the next one is loss asset according to rbi a loss asset is uncollectible and it is of very little value to even consider or continue it as a bankable asset. Though there might be some returns from this loan also. And the next one from this article is insolvency and bankruptcy code. First of all, what is meant by this insolvency? It is a state of being not able to repay the debts. If a person or a company or a family, whoever was in this position that means they were not able to repay their debts they will be considered as insolvent and what is meant by this bankruptcy bankruptcy is a legal declaration of one's inability to pay off these debts it is a legal declaration for this insolvency so what is the need for this quote as an Indian banking industry is facing financial crisis due to the pileup of these non-performing assets to resolve these insolvency issues this code was brought in 
so now we'll see how this insolvency resolution will happen according to this code first of all the creditor for example the bank a financial bank has to submit a petition for insolvency to the adjudicating authority it is the national company law tribunal in case of corporates if the debtor is a corporate then the adjudicating authority is national company law tribunal whereas if it is an individual then it is debt recovery tribunal it has to file a petition to resolve this issue to the debt recovery tribunal whereas in case of corporates it is to the national company law tribunal then if this tribunal accepts it within 14 days then an insolvency resolution professional will be appointed who will draft this insolvency resolution plan within 180 days and during this time all the board members of the company of this corporate company will be suspended if this resolution plan was accepted by minimum 75% of the creditors then it will be followed this insolvency resolution plan will be put into action in case they didn't accept then the company will be liquidated that means the company's assets will be sold off and its debts will be cleared off our next article is editing our genes this comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of science and technology from this article now we are going to see about this gene editing co tool called as crispr cas9 before seeing about this tool we should know what is meant by gene editing gene editing or genome editing is nothing but making specific changes to the dna sequence of a cell or an organism an enzyme will be used to cut this dna at a specific sequence which will be repaired or edited so as i said an enzyme is needed to cut this dna these enzymes are called as engineered nucleases so dna will be inserted deleted or replaced in the genome of a living organism using this engineered nucleases or molecular scissors these are the tools used to cut this dna at a specific location at present there are four families of these engineered nucleases that are being used one is like this mega nuclease second zinc finger nuclease transcription activator like effector based nucleases and the fourth one is this crispr cas system this crispr the acro it is acronym for clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats these are the sections of dna that contains of short repetitions of this sequences so what about this cas9 it is crispr associated protein 9 it is an enzyme which is used to break the dna at a specific location now let us see how this tool works this crispr is used to scan the genome looking for the right location and this crispr uses this cas9 protein as molecular scissors to snip through the dna and cut the target sequence our next article is supreme court to deliver verdict on quota in promotion this comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of polity from this article now we are going to see what is meant by this consequential seniority consequential seniority means the seniority that is attained due to some consequences no matter what are those reasons for example take two persons a and b both of them are working at a level 1 in a job but a is 3 years senior to b and he is from general category and b is from 
or reserved category both are waiting to get promoted to the level 2 though a is senior but due to reservation b gets promoted first now b is in level 2 whereas a is in level 1 only so b becomes senior to a and in the next year a will also get promoted to level 2 so now what will be the relationship between these a and b as per this consequential seniority b will remain as senior to a even though a had more experience than b under the 85th amendment act of 2001 to the constitution liberty was given to the states to give reservation in promotion under this concept of consequential seniority under article 16 clause 4a if this promotion satisfies these conditions like that the community the dalit community should be backward inadequately represented and this reservation in promotion will not affect the overall efficiency of public administration then only a state can follow this consequential seniority in promotion the next article is trump accuses iran of sowing chaos woes more sanctions this comes under the gs paper 2 under the topic of international relations from this article we are going to see about opec the organization of petroleum exporting countries it is a permanent intergovernmental organization created at the baghdad conference by iran iraq kuwait saudi arabia and venezuela by 2018 it has 15 member countries they are algeria angola ecuador equatorial guinea gabon iran iraq kuwait libya nigeria qatar republic of congo saudi arabia united arab emirates and venezuela these countries all these 15 countries they account for an estimation of 44% of global oil production and 81.5% of the world's proven oil reserves which is giving this organization opec a major influence on global oil prices the objective of this organization is to coordinate and uniform the petroleum policies among the member countries in order to secure fair and stable prices for petroleum producers and to be an efficient economic and regular supplier of petroleum to the consuming nations and to provide a fair return on capital for all those who are in the investing in this industry our next article is not ruling out a second referendum says labor this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topics of polity as well as international relations from this article we are going to see what is meant by this referendum referendums are instruments of direct democracy where citizens get an opportunity to straightforwardly vote on a particular issue because they are perceived as a better democratic instrument especially in modern states where people were having a better say in the decision making this referendum is a form of true democracy as it gives power to the people directly referendums they tend to add legitimacy to difficult legislative choices as it is more risky to take unpopular decisions without that stamp of legitimacy our indian constitution does not allow referendums and there is no provision for this but at the time of partition of india that is during undivided india a referendum was held to decide the future of this northwest frontier pakistan and a referendum was also used on abolishing the monarchy in sikkim which ultimately resulted in the state becoming an indian state our next article is apex court wants government to fill securities appellate tribunal vacancies quickly this comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy so from this article now we are going to see about this securities appellate tribunal we know that the securities exchange board of india is responsible for protecting the interests of investors in securities and, and to promote development and to regulate the securities market 
So, in order to be protective and responsive to the needs of three groups, that is, the issuer of securities, investors on the securities, and the market intermediaries, SEBI has invested with three necessary functions. The first one is quasi legislative function in order to draft the regulations. The other one is quasi judicial to, to pass rulings and to resolve the disputes. The final one is quasi executive to investigate into the disputes and to enforce the actions. For doing these quasi judicial functions, it has a separate authority called as Securities Appellate Tribunal, which is a three member tribunal. This Three member body is composed of a presiding officer and two other members who are nominated with the notification by the central government. The security appellate tribunal will perform the quasi judicial functions in the SEBI. Our next article is India ranks 158th in human capital score behind Sudan. This comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of international relations. From the prelims level, from these kind of articles, we should know the particulars of those ratings and who released this report. This is a Lancet report on human capital. The study on human capital was conducted by the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation on the request of World Bank. It is the first of its kind to measure and compare the strength of countries human capital this is the first time they are comparing the strength of the country's human capital in which our india was ranked at 158th in the world in these rankings for its investments in education and healthcare according to this study and the next article is unemployment among educated youth at 16 percent this comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy the subtopic of development and employment so from the prelims level we should know the state of working india 2008 report this report was released by ajim premji university center for sustainable employment and the study has found that there is an increase in divergence between the growth and job despite economic growth there is lot of unemployment so from the prelims point of view you just have to know about this report now we'll see the questions from our today's video the first question is what is the purpose of this crispr cas9 tool to detect neutrinos to de edit the dna sequence to detect effectiveness of missile defense system to detect gravitational waves and the next question is with reference to insolvency and bankruptcy code, consider the following statements. National Company Law Tribunal will adjudicate insolvency resolution for individuals. Debt Recovery Tribunal will adjudicate insolvency resolution for companies. Try to answer these questions and post the answers in the comment box and we will see the detailed explanation for these questions in our tomorrow's video. And this is our Law Excellence website where you can access notes for this video. Thank you.